Hi everybody. So today it's gonna be a long video. I'm gonna tell you that. So if you're here for the ride, God bless you. I mean, really. Uh, this is gonna be a quite a long video. Um, because I'm collecting all the information that I can about. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, the rip cords. The rip cords. California Sound. The these guys are the only ones that really got the best Cal. I mean, the Beach Boys and Jan and Dean, of course, with these guys. But they really got the California Sound the best. I I mean, the Beach Boys, of course, went on to other things afterwards. And again, same with Jan and Dean. But these guys and and then the other two definitely are the only ones that really captured the full California Sound. But these guys, all their material, I think, is like that, for the most part. Um, so there's been a lot of different stuff, or a lot of different uh, things, and, you know, different information that's went around about these guys that have just it blew my mind how crazy these people are. Not not the ripcords, they're great. Um, well, I, uh, how much, uh, you know... The kind of stuff that people have said about the group, it just, it's really weird and it's really kind of sad about how forgotten some of, some of the different things are in their, in their history. Um, so I'm going to stop blabbering on about all that. We're going to get into this stuff. It's going to be a while, so just, you know, hang tight. I mean, really. Okay. So, um, okay. Ernie and Phil, Ernie Bringus and Phil Stewart, um, started, started the group in 1957. Okay. And, um, basically, uh, they went to high school together, and, you know, they wanted to form a group. I mean, who didn't at that time? Um, and so, Ernie was born on September 19th, 1939, and Phil was born sometime in 1938. I didn't. I couldn't find the exact date. Um, if anybody knows that or can track that down, please let me know. Um, and uh, so, and again, this is this stuff is not going to come up. This stuff that I'm going to say right now really isn't going to make a big part in the story till a little bit later. But Terry Melcher and Bruce Johnston, of course, are also a pretty big part of this story. Uh, Terry was born on February eighth, nineteen forty two, and Bruce. Uh, June 27th, 1942. Okay. So, um, basically, like I said, they, they just started out as the opposites. Um, and, uh, Ernie and Phil in, uh, in 1950, 1958, sorry, recorded a song that they'd written called Raindrops, Raindrops. And there's a video of Ernie on, on here as well of him talking about quite a bit of this stuff too and there's actually a little snippet of that but that's the only place that you can really find any of that song anywhere so they rec uh, recorded that and uh, with the help of Ray Pullman from the Wrecking Crew and uh, they submitted it to many different labels tried and tried and tried and then they were like well okay we've been doing this for three four years now let's you know that's you know let's give up and so uh, Ernie said hey uh, I was, you know, he was going through some old records, and he was like, hey, you know, I was, he was thinking about Jan and Arnie on Arwen Records, and he had known that they had moved to, to Dory, and it was now Jan and Dean, so he's like, well, I wonder if they need a new act to, to replace Jan and Arnie. So he went over there, and, um, they, uh, they finally got it, and they got to audition, which was uh, Doris Day's label, which, I mean, of course, is Terry Melcher's mother, and you know, that's going to play a very big part later in this story. So they were asked to audition uh, with uh, Arwen slash Daywin, uh, which led to the audition at Columbia with Terry. Now, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, I'm assuming it just has something to do with Doris Day being on the label, but I'm not incredibly, or I'm not completely sure why they had him had them go to Columbia because Columbia had not had any rock and roll acts at the time so they were the first really the first Columbia rock and roll act 
to exist, really. Of course, later on, you know, they would go down and they have Paul Revere and the Raiders and, you know, the birds and different things like that. But, um, so, basically, um, you know, they, they auditioned for Terry and they got the deal. And so, um, three weeks after they signed with Columbia, which, and the date for the se uh, this session was on, uh, September 6th, 1962. Uh, Ernie and Phil went in with Terry producing and Irving Townsend uh, under supervision at the session um, and recorded two originals, uh, Karen, which has a lead by Ernie and Phil, and then Ding Dong, which of course is also has an original by Ernie and Phil, uh, which also has a lead by Ernie and Phil. Um, really great stuff right there. Um, Ernie taking like most of the stuff, or most of the... Um, lead on Ding Dong because there's like some falsetto in there and some like just you know different things like that which he did um and then uh Phil did always did the the bass part or the baritone part the lower um and so they did that and uh that those two were originally going to be the first single but they were um they were they failed to materialize I don't know maybe I mean Ding Dong, and it's not the best single. It's, I mean, Ding Dong is very, very, it's really, would only work as an album fill, and it turns out that it actually is the closer on Hey Little Cobra. Kind of weird that they put that on there instead of Karen, but, you know. Um, so, they did that, and then, um, they, uh, around this time, they wanted, they changed the name, because like I said, at this point, they're still the opposite, so... Uh, which is kind of weird because, um, apparently Phil was, like, uh, an investigator, I guess, kind of thing. And then Ernie was, uh, like, in the, in the seminary kind of stuff. He was really into, like, religion and different things like that. It's kind of odd that they're the apps. But they changed their name to the Ripcords. Phil has said that, uh, they got the name because of Dor one of Doris Day's favorite TV shows, Ripcord. But Terry has completely denied that and said, I just came up with it. It was just a play on words. Um, so, uh, now as the rip chords, they went in and redid, well, they didn't, re well, technically they redid because it's a cover, but, um, they said, okay, Karen and Ding Dong didn't work for some weird reason. They went in a few months later on December 17th, 1962, and recorded the country song Here I Stand in more of a rock and roll pop kind of arrangement. Um, and so this did pretty good. Um, it was released in the Feb it was released in February of sixty three. Again, these guys really couldn't play. I mean, besides Bruce, I mean, you know, of course. Um but they really couldn't play besides Phil could play a little bit of guitar. But besides that, they didn't play. It was all all the uh, instrumental stuff on here. All the in all the instru yeah, all the instrumental stuff on this on this is done by the Rip Chords. Oh, oh my gosh, done by the Wrecking Crew. Sorry, I'm already screwing up. Um, and so uh, Glenn Cam uh, Glenn Campbell played the lead on Here I Stand, um, as well as Gone, which we're gonna get to in a minute. Um, and so. Yeah, it was just, you know, it was all the Wrecking Crew. Um, and he also, of course, played on many other, you know, many other songs as well. So then Here I Stand uh, nationally peaked at number 51, but reached the top 20 on KFWB and KRLA in LA and uh, WQAM in Miami and uh, WLS in Chicago. So, um, there's a cute, there's a pretty cool Christmas card on Ernie's website from Terry. It says, here I stand is a smash. Merry Christmas. It's really cool. Um, go check out his website, um, if you haven't. Um, so, Gone is the next one. Uh, and by this time, Terry had met Bruce. And, um, Bruce is now, I guess you could say, he's in the group now because he sings on this single. Gone is back with She Thinks I Still Care, which again is another kind of a country cover. Um, so, and they both have a lead by Ernie. Um, oh, and I should have said that Here I Stand 
has a lead by Ernie with Phil doing the uh, lower background part. So on that, Ernie is doing all the regular, the tenor parts, you know, the falsetto, and then Phil is doing the lower part. Um, same thing basically goes for Gone and She Thinks I Still Care, but um, on Gone, Phil does that really cool, Gone, 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 yeah, she's gone, gone, gone. And then Bruce do, is doing that, yeah, she's gone, you know, he's doing all that wild stuff, and then Ernie takes the main lead. So, Phil, Ernie, and Bruce are the only three singing on that recording, as well as the B-side, She Thinks I Still Care, which uh, has, I, I believe, yeah, er, 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 Ernie and Phil doubling, er, Ernie and Bruce doubling on the falsetto, again, with Phil doing the lower part. So, nationally, Gone didn't do as well. It only got to 88, but, oh, and uh, um, another little side note here. According to Phil, the original idea was to record the Furlan Husky song called Gone, but Carrie and Bruce had, had written, um, you know, the Gone by the Ripcords. Um, and the intro on that is actually done by Gracia Nietzsche, which is, you know, of course, Jack Nietzsche's wife or girlfriend. Um, so, I don't know, I don't know about the whole Phil thing, or I don't know about the thing that Phil said with, you know, saying that, um, they record that they were going to record that but who knows but it did um uh you know regardless of it um you know going only to 88 on the national charts it did get to number two uh on the week of august 1st in 19 uh, of 1963 above elvis's delvis and uh devil in disguise so um pretty cool and also sometime around this period the Hot Doggers album, Surfing USA, which is the Rip Chords, actually. I mean, many people just credit it to Bruce and Terry, but it is the Rip Chords. Bruce is on lead, and then Ernie and Phil are on backing vocals, and then, of course, Terry producing. Um, and then uh, Bruce's Surfing Around the World LP. There's two songs on there. Well, one of them was on the original, and then one of them's the alternate version to Surfing Around the World. And Surfing's Here to Stay is the one on the original album that they sing back up on. And then the sur alternate to Surfing Around the World, Ernie and Phil also sing back up on. Okay, so, um, also sometime around here, uh, Terry had signed, uh, Eddie Hodges, um, who had a big hit with I'm Gonna Knock on Your Door, uh, back about four or five years ago, before, you know, you know before Gone. You know, five years before Gone, sorry. Um, and the song that they sing, I, I don't know about the B-side because I cannot find the B-side, but they, I can tell you that Ernie and Phil are singing back up on uh, Would You Come Back by Eddie Hodges, which I believe was March of 63, I believe it was released sometime around there. Okay, so at this point, like I said, Ernie is very involved with the whole, uh, you know, ministerial kind of thing in the seminary and that kind of stuff. So... He said, okay, uh, you know, we're going to take a break now. So he went back to seminary. He was going to go uh, do this because he had just graduated from California State. And so he was now going to go on to pursue more of the ministerial kind of stuff. And um, in Dayton, Ohio, he went to the, uh, the theological uh, s seminary, or at United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and... This, at this point, it wouldn't be a problem because whenever Ernie would need to return to record with Phil, he could just easily fly back to Hollywood. But, who's going to tour? Because they need to back up the records. Um, so, they had no idea. So, you know, what are we going to do? But, anyway, a little thing, tracking back a little bit. Before Ernie did a seminary break, they, uh, Ernie and Phil did play a few shows, um... One at the Hollywood Bowl, and then one a charity show with the Tommy Dorsey Band, which is really interesting. And they are apparently they also did a few TV spots as well. Okay, so now back to the whole Ernie leaving thing. Um, the church really didn't like Ernie being involved with you know rock and roll, so they said, "Well, if you want to record, then you're not going to be able to do the seminary stuff." you know, we're not going to let you, um, so, and they said, if you do go and record, you, you won't be able to, you know, um, 
do your educational studies in seminary, and you will also not be able to come to the seminary. So he didn't really want to do that, so he agreed to the, uh, not recording, which, again, posed a problem. Who's going to record? So, at this point, Ernie's, okay, you know, whatever. Phil's completely clueless. He doesn't know what he's going to do because Ernie's not there. So Bruce and Terry were like, uh, they, they had came upon this song um, called Hey Little Cobra, um, and so, I, I don't, I don't exactly know how Terry found this song, but he found it, and he liked it, and he wanted to record it. So, um, and he wanted to put the Ripcord's name on it, because the, he had already had, a, you know, some things going with them, and he knew it was gonna be a smash, and it sure was. And so, see, now this is where it kind of gets a little bit more confusing, because Terry and Bruce are the only people that sing on Hey Little Cobra. So Terry, again, is this is like the first time he really sang on a Rip Chords thing. Um, and he sings the lead. And Bruce does the falsetto, and he also does the shut him down, the bass part, and the chorus. So with, her, uh, with Terry now being the producer and the singer as well, um, it kind of, you know, puts a little confusion. Like I said, this is where it really, really gets confusing. Uh, and this was recorded on October 15th of 1963, as well as the B-side, The Queen, which is a Terry and Bruce original, with, again, an, a lead by Terry. And, um, really great song, a nice doo-wop kind of feel to it. Um, Dion kind of style. Um, so, with that, you know, we're like, well, what are we gonna do? You know, now we have kind of two separate things going on here. So... Um, by this time, they were, okay, we have to figure out something for the touring side of it. So, they brought in Rich Rockin and Arnie Marcus, who I'm not a fan of, because they, or I, I believe just Rich at this point uh, is touring as the Rip Chords with a bunch of other random people, and he is, you know, out there saying, oh, these are our hits, and so, you know, he calls himself an original Rip Chord, but he's really not. Um, and they never, never, never recorded with uh, in a, on any of the 60s material as a rip course. They did some really bad remakes later. Um, so anyway, with Ernie absent um, and Phil really the only member, you know, like I said, Bruce and Terry went in alone. So Columbia, I guess, knew. I guess, you know, they went in and had a meeting or something, and they knew that Terry and Bruce did it, I guess, and they were not happy. They wanted Ernie and Phil on it, because technically, the legal contract have only Ernie and Phil signed on as the rip chords. So, Terry and Bruce are ghost singers, and they basically are just, you know, unknown, because besides being producers, which they do get credit as producers, but besides that... Okay, anyway... Hey Little Cobra peaked at number four internationally, their biggest hit, and it was released in November 63. Um, Ernie says he remembers receiving a call from Phil to rejoin the group. Now, in terms of the whole thing with all four of them somehow recording, I'm really glad that it happened, but I, I really don't know how or why. Because was it just a contractual obligation? Or did Bruce and Terry want them on there because they knew that they were capable of doing this stuff? Or was it both? I really don't know. There's, there might be other reasons, too. I, I don't know. There's a lot of different uh, skeptical things that are going on with that whole thing that, um, me, that I you know, kind of discovered. Um, and again, you know, I don't know. Anyway, um... So he talked to his bishop, his local bishop, and um, the decision that was made before about him not being able to record was now reversed, so he could now record with the rip chords, but only record. He could not tour because he still had to come back and do, you know. Okay, so we have this now. We have this now. I've also got a really cool promo copy that I will show you. It's got the star on it. Um, and, and, I mean, it, 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 it is. I mean, I've, I, it is the white, it's a white label promo. I'm not going to take it out and show you because 
I mean, you know, this is already 20 minutes long. So anyway, uh, so this is the first album. Um, and anyway, so I'm going to just go through the track tracks and, you know, talk about them a little bit. Again, this is just, you know, it's a really good album. It's one of my favorites. Um, of course, it opens with Hey Little Cobra, lead by Terry with a bit of Bruce in there. Here I Stand is, you know, they put the, the big hits first. Um, so, Here I Stand, which again is a lead by Ernie. So, then we get The Queen, which again is sung by Terry and is B-side to Hey Little Cobra. And now, three tracks in, we finally get a song by the band that we haven't heard by them before. It's a cover. It's 409. Um... Which is sung by Ernie, sings the verses, and then Phil sings the choruses. He does a really nice bass vocal on that. Um, so then after that, we finally get the first n brand new song. And that's Trophy Machine. And this is one of my top favorites by the band. Um, with a l great lead by Terry and some really great harmony from all four of them. So then that's, uh, we close side two with, Go oh, class side one with Gone, again, with a lead by Ernie, and, you know, I, I already talked about all that. Okay, so then we open up side two with uh, another Beach Boys cover, Little Deuce Coop, with basically the only people that are singing on this are uh, Terry and Ernie. Uh, Ernie does the falsetto, and then uh, or Ernie, yeah, I, did I say Ernie? Ernie does the falsetto, and then Terry does the main lead. 44 Time is the next song, and it's just a basic instrumental by the Wrecking Crew, pretty good. She Thinks I Still Care, which again was the B-side to Gone, with a great lead by Ernie, falsetto by uh, Bruce, and then, you know, a bit of uh, bass vocals in there from Phil. So next we get another Beach Boys cover, uh, with another lead by Ernie, uh, Shutdown. And that's a really great cover. It's, mm, it's probably as good as the Beach Boys version. So now we get the only uh, really other drag hit, at the time so far, and that was Drag City by Jan and Dean. Uh, with, um, Ernie does the falsetto here, Bruce does the, the bass part, and then Terry does the lead. So then, like I said, we close this album with Ding Dong, which is uh, from the first ever recording session written by, and this is written by Ernie and Phil. Um, so overall, really great album. I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I really enjoy this. Okay, so some other songs that were done during the sessions for this, which the sessions for this took place, <clears throat> um, let's see, let me find the, the sessions for this. December, December of 63, December 2nd, um, yeah, mostly done, um, between, yeah, let me make sure here I'm doing everything right. Yeah. December, basically just December of 63, and, uh, they did a little bit of, um, recording, uh, early into the year as well. January 17th, 1964, Ernie is still at home from seminary break, and they go into the studio and record, um, a song written by Jan Barry, and, um, of course, of, of Jan and Dean, and, uh, Roger Christian, called Three Window Coop, which would later appear on Jan and Dean's album Dead Man's Curve and New Girl in School. Again, this was recorded January 17th, 1964, with a great lead by Terry, and of course, all four of them are on the recording, uh, with, uh, and um, the B-side to it, Hot Rod USA, with Bruce doing the falsetto, um, and then Terry doing the lead. Another song that was done on this day that is, uh, at this point, credited to Bruce and Terry, which is uh, the Beach Boys song, Hawaii, which they all, uh, I'm, at least I'm pretty sure, are all, are all on it. Um, so, that's another one that was done on that day. Um, and another, like, couple things that were done during this time were Stingray, which is an unreleased ripcord song, and I Love You, Metal T, which is a song that Bruce sings on the Bruce and, Best of Bruce and Terry CD. Um, so those were other ones that were done during the sessions, as well as, yeah, which is also on here, which is really just, yeah, it's just, it's really weird. Anyway, back to Three Window Coop, um, made 28, uh, got to 28 nationally, and, um, overall did pretty well. And again, uh, the 
touring rip chords are just Phil, Arnie, and Rich, you know, again. Uh, and, um, anyway, it's, it's kind of odd now because, um, you know, you've just got two completely different groups going on, and it's, it's pretty odd. So, anyway, um, Three Window Coop, the single, was released in April of 64, and so then, in, a, in the same month, um, it was released March, April, um, same month, uh, Carrie calls Ernie and says, Hey, can you come back and let's do the Three Window Coop album? So, uh, around this time, Ernie was, you know, about to do finals and things, but his professors let him go and record this. Okay, again, very, you know, quick recording thing. Very, done in basically four or five days. Um, and I, I think they only really did two main sessions for the album, um, on May 1st and May 5th. Maybe they did a little bit here and there that is not, um, included on the, on the Summer USA set, which is a really cool thing. If you don't have this, get it. Um, and so, it's, it's, um, so they did that, and so now I'll talk about the Three Window Coop album. So, uh, Three Egg opens with Three Window Coop. Who would have thought? Um, which is sung by Terry. And uh, track two is Bonneville Bonnie, which is the first time we ever get to hear Phil sing a lead vocal. Um, and it was also um, written by Phil. So uh, that's pretty cool. So then the next track is Gas Money, which is originally done by Jan and Arnie, with a lead by Ernie. Uh, next we have This Little Woody, which is um, a P.S. Sloan and Steve Barry original. And... Around this time, this is when Phil actually plays guitar on a little bit of this stuff. On this album specifically, I think he plays on quite a bit of it. Definitely on this little Woody, probably on, on well, definitely on Surf and Craze, Big Gun Board. Those are a few that I, I think he plays on. As well as um, Wawa Heaney and One Piece Top with Bathing Suit, which we'll get to a little bit later. So, um... Like I said, we have This Little Woody, which is sung by all four of them together with Bruce doing the falsetto. Next, we have Hot Rod USA, and I already talked about that. Terry on lead, Bruce doing the falsetto. And then we close that side out with uh, a Bruce and Terry original called Old Car Made in 52, which is also sung by Phil. So we open up side two with, I think, my favorite Ernie lead vocal, uh, Surf and Craze, which is also written by Phil and Steve. Um, so then we also have Beach Girl which, um, has their best harmony in it, definitely. And, um, they also, uh, use the same, uh, vocals on this one that's, um, they, well, they recorded these before, of course, but they put the backing vocals from this version on the Pat Boone version, which was released a little bit later in the year. So I thought that was kind of cool that they were like, yeah, you know, we don't have time to record backing vocals. Let's just put the rip chords one, you know, the rip chords on. But there are, there is a little bit of, um, Bruce and Terry vocals in there that were recorded after the fact. Next, we have, I think, my favorite Ripcord song, another Phil and Steve original, uh, My Big Gun Board, which is sung by Ernie and Terry. Uh, really, really great song. Surf City, cover, Jan and Dean cover, uh, with some, I believe the falsetto in this is, is um, Ernie and uh, Phil, er, Ernie, and, Ernie and Bruce doubling. Yeah. Um... Uh, and then the main lead is, uh, by, uh, Terry and Phil together. So, then we have Summer USA, which is, um, really great song, of course, uh, sung by Terry. And then we close it with the only instrumental on the album, Big Wednesday, instrumental by the Wrecking Crew, of course. So by this time, they're like, well, what are we gonna do now? You know, we've done the album, we've done the single, everything. They're like, okay, so we should just record another single. You know, we should put another one out, see what happens. So, um, a month later, um, I don't know. I think they probably just had, uh, Ernie go, and then he was home for the summer, of course. Um, and that was Wawa Heaney. And that was originally going to be the next A-side. Um, and so... 
they were gonna do that. Um, I really like as well. Uh, I also really like Ernie's choice of having, um, Big Gun Board be the next day side. I think that would have been a really good idea. Um, so Wawa Heaney was originally gonna be the next day side, but then I don't know the reason. I've 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 read the reason why before, but I I can't seem to find it right now. Um. And, uh, the, the A-side wound up being One Piece Topless Bathing Suit, which, uh, I think just cracked the top 100. Really bad single choice. They would have done a lot better with Big Gun Board or Wawa Heaney. Um, Wawa Heaney is also written by Phil and Steve. And then, um, One Piece Topless is written by, uh, Phil and Steve along with Don Atfield. Or Outfield, sorry. So, um, there's, there's that whole thing. Um, so, uh, after that, you know, that basically ruined, ruined most of this, most of the potential that they had to go on into recording into 65. So that was, I believe, released August of 64, July. Um, so then they did a song for the movie A Swing in Summer, which was originally going to be a new single, but just wound up on the uh, the movie soundtrack, which I think this actually probably would have been a pretty decent single. Uh, and that's Red Hot Roadster, which was recorded on September 16th, 1964, the same day as a song called XKE, which I think would have been a great A-side as well. I mean, those two together would have been a really great single, um, which was written by Terry and Roger Christian, and uh, Red Hot Roadster was also written by Terry and Roger Christian. Um, so, uh, and now uh, XKE was also unreleased um, up until the release of the CD, of the Summer USA CD. Um, so now, you know, we're getting basically pretty deep into the career. They're really not having too much success anymore. Ernie's back in school, Phil's out on the road with the band, with the other two um, touring members, and uh, things are kind of, kind of starting to wash up. Um, so by this time, you know, they're like, well, what are we going to do? Oh, and I should go back also. One more instrumental that was done. Why Amiya Bay was done on the same day as Wawa Heaney. Little side note there. So, Terry and uh, Bruce were like, okay, well, let's, you know, see what happens. So, uh, Terry wrote a song with some dude named R. Webster. I don't know. I've never heard of him before. And that song is Don't Be Scared, which was recorded on November 24th, 1964. And another uh, song that was cut during this time that um, I believe uh, has Ernie and Phil on it that's on the Bruce and Terry thing is uh, Here Comes Summer, which again, this is going back. This is March 3rd of 64. It says it's recorded on March 3rd of 64. Uh, Ernie was at school, so, and I think I definitely hear him on that along with Phil. So. Maybe he came back, maybe there were some sessions down there that nobody knows about, and that's the only one that surfaced, or something like that. But I think I do hear uh, Ernie and Phil on that, so I don't know about the recording date thing, though. Um, so anyway, back to Don't Be Scared. Uh, that was, you know, pretty great song, one of my favorites. Really great guitar licks in there. And Ernie has said that he's not on this. But I, I hear him a little bit here and there. So whether he's on this or not, I don't know. Um, so again, that was recorded November 24th, 1964. And that didn't chart. Really sad. Um, but by this time, again, you know, Ernie was pretty deep into his studies. And, um, you know, Terry was starting to produce more and more acts. Um, Bruce would go on to join the Beach Boys a few months later, and, f uh, according to Ernie, Phil wound up doing what he always wanted to do, which was country and western music. I have not been able to track down any of his material, um, so if anybody can lead me to any of that, please let me know. Um, so, in terms of doing musical stuff after the rip chords. I, I basically, I already explained all that. Terry went on to produce The Birds, Paul Revere, and The Raiders, a bunch of different acts. Um, and so, 
And as for Ernie, he does this, like, really weird, like, Christian album in, like, the mid-70s with a bunch of other people, and the only thing he does on it is he write, co-writes most of it. That's the only thing that he has to do with it. But he's on the album cover, so, um, yeah. Uh, so, I think that's basically it. I mean, Terry, of course, uh, he's passed away, and so is Phil, but Ernie and Bruce are still with us. So... I think I've got everything. Let me just, you know, double check. I think, but I think I've got, uh, just about everything that I wanted to get in here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I've got everything. Um, okay. So, uh, sorry, this was really long and it was a bit sloppy. But, uh, I really wanted to get this done. And I hope everybody understood this. Uh, and I'd also like to thank uh, my good friend Mike, who helped me with all of this. None of this would have been possible without him. As well as Ernie, um, Terry, um, Bruce, and then a little bit from Phil. He's kind of, like, gotten in some of these readings here. No, I have not actually talked to any of these guys, but I've read multiple things about all this kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, and also the, uh, where is it? The Summer USA book. So, I think that's going to conclude it. Um, so, thank you.